why don't we jump right into our first topic? And if you are if you're a frequenter of r slash Apple, um, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to grab your grab your copium supplements because this is gonna be pretty hard to hear. But the reason that I am happy about this news is not that I hate Apple. In fact, yeah. uh, those of you who were here for the pre-show on Floatplane and Twitch will have seen that I daily drive AirPods. I actually use Apple products as part of my life and even, even pay a lot of money for them. Do you know how you know I pay a lot of money for them? Those because they're made by Apple. Oh, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> and I have... <laughs> Uh-oh, we lost him. Uh, while we hopefully get him back, I'm just going to start reading the topic. Yeah, he's uh, back. He's back? Should be. Cool. Yeah, he's back. Okay. Do you cool. want to turn the bandwidth down a little bit? Oh, Actually, uh, let's have Luke read the topic. Already tell him and, to do that. Uh, I'll cool. be right, right back. Sounds good. Yesterday, the U.S. Department of, du uh, of Justice, wow, that would be a cool department, the U.S. Department of Justice and attorneys general from more than a dozen states filed a lawsuit against Apple for monopolizing smartphone markets. In the DOJ's most significant antitrust lawsuit since its, like, amazingly massive case against Microsoft in 1998, in which Microsoft was accused of acting anti-competitively to push Internet Explorer, if any of you even remember that, on users. Epic Games' Fortnite lawsuit only claimed that Apple had a monopoly on the iOS software distribution market. This lawsuit concerns Apple's effects on the smartphone market at large. The whole thing iPhones account for around 56% of the U.S. smartphone market, having passed the 50% mark in 2020. The case in a nutshell, the government complaint cites pretty much every complaint about iOS brought up by users in recent memory. This includes Apple blocking third-party app stores, payment systems, and sideloading on iOS, intentionally obstructing cross-platform features in apps like Apple Messages, making it seem to iPhone users like Android phones are to blame. Uh, so you should, you know, just, just buy your mom an iPhone that quote, uh, a line that the DOJ quotes specifically in its document. You can look up that clip. It's it's pretty great. Um, suppressing cloud streaming services. Apple did recently change their global policies to allow services like Xbox Cloud Streaming and GeForce Now to host their game streaming library in a single iOS app. Uh, also, refusing to add Android support to Apple Watch. In response, Apple told 9to5Mac they investigated this possibility for three years concluding it wasn't doable because of technical limitations. Also, forcing now, third can party... I, hold on. Can I... Can I I'm a, I'm, look, I'm going to let you finish, but can I just call... Uh, I don't have my bleep button, so so I'll have to come up just, with a creative just manually uh, do it. name. Um, oxen manure. Um, on that, there is, there is absolutely... <laughs> No way that a company the size of Apple with Apple's resources could not find any meaningful way to get the Apple Watch working. Right. I don't think that people even would have expected feature parity. I mean, as an Android user with AirPods, I understand that I'm a bit of a second class citizen. There are certain things that, you know, I, I, I get you know, are not necessarily going to work. Like if Apple is using, um, you know, a special proprietary codec or something like that to enable their spatial nonsense, it's like, okay, yeah, you know what, maybe I don't get that. But there are certain things, no, this is, this is them degrading the experience because they malicious, I, I shouldn't say malicious, but because they, Oh, man. I, arrogance. The word escapes me right now, but basically because they don't respect me enough for not buying enough of their products to put in the work for me. The fact that I can't alter what the long presses of the stems do unless I buy an iPhone and connect it to an iPhone, um, that's really bad. The fact that I cannot update the firmware in any way without... <clears throat> a Bluetooth connection to an iPhone is that that's just that, they just obviously hate their users. It's it's yeah, it's there you go. Thank you. Lightning man GTS. It's spiteful. Um, there's absolutely no way that they shouldn't be able to update the firmware some other way. They just designed the product in such a way that it just won't work. Uh, and they do it on purpose. Um, 
a, a part of me is willing to sort of consider a little bit that everyone at Apple probably just, you know, enemas the Kool-Aid all day, every day, and can't even imagine a world where you you just wouldn't have an iPhone. Um, so it's not a problem at all. Uh, so, you know, why would we have a way for you to, you know, connect to the case via a wire and have it, you know, push that way or something? And, and I understand that the, the case is just for charging or or whatever, except that it's not because they can definitely communicate with the AirPods via the case. So I don't know. Um, so I can understand why they just wouldn't consider it when they're designing the product. But it just happens too consistently to the point where it has to be on purpose at this point. And I think that's essentially what the DOJ is getting at is that we've got this long history of Apple designing their products for minimum interoperability and then basically shrugging and going, buy more of our stuff. Okay, Luke, sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Uh, to, to continue the citations uh, from the government, forcing third-party payment services to use Apple Wallet, blocking super apps like WeChat, uh, Alipay, and other apps that also serve as platforms for mini apps and thus reduce the user's dependence on Apple's own features, and more. There's there's tons. The DOG, DOJ even says CarPlay is anti-competitive, which was actually kind of interesting to me but anyways um uh, yeah so that doesn't make sense on the surface but yeah. if you click through what they're okay. what they're alluding to is actually a carplay future uh not the state of carplay right now so apple is apparently telling auto manufacturers that in the future if they want to be able to support carplay they're going to have to enable apple to take control of all the screens in the car not just a windowed screen. And this is really frustrating to me because one of the issues that I've had with uh, Teslas, for example, one of the one of my main reasons for not being interested in a Tesla for years, even though on paper it was like, what, you're like a tech guy. You should just have a Tesla, right? Um, one of my main issues was that I was locked into Tesla's operating system. So yeah, I could use Google Maps, as long as Tesla decided I could use Google Maps. Like I, I couldn't just plug in my phone and, and use whatever I wanted. And it's been shown now that you could totally, even in a Tesla, just run Android Auto or run CarPlay in a window and get all of that functionality that you want that way instead of relying on Tesla's, uh, Tesla's own entertainment operator. But I was like, no, this is absolutely, this is absolutely perfect. I never have to be at the mercy of the car manufacturer who, uh, and Tesla, you know what, to their credit, has been a lot better than traditional car manufacturers about this, but I still just don't trust car manufacturers to keep their software up to date, whereas I trust myself to keep buying a new phone every time I need one, which as it turns out, is not very often, <laughs> but, no but I can do that. And then I can just bring, yeah, I can just bring that new experience with me. Um, and this, I didn't realize, would totally yeah, tank that because all I wanted was my phone to run in a little window on my dashboard. I don't want I don't want my phone to completely take over the car. I want my car to work like my car should and my phone to work like my phone should and then just I can listen to whatever music I want on playlists that I have stored on my phone. That's it. That's all I'm asking for. And I just don't understand why companies like Apple have to have to flex like this and impose their will. Like god, who cares? You already sold the iPhone. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, great. yeah. And by the way, no, I was not rapping or doing weird uh, gestures. I was, I was bringing liberty and freedom to a, a bug that was bothering me. Um, anyways, moving on. Apple issued a statement saying that the lawsuit threatens who we are and would hinder our ability to create the kind of technology people expect from Apple, where hardware, software, and services intersect. Okay. Many parallels are being I'm drawn. Sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt you again right here because I actually <laughs> agree with that. I agree extremely strongly with that. This this lawsuit does threaten who definitely they are. Apple is because Apple Apple are anti competitive assholes, um, and this would threaten that in a big way. Um, as for whether it would hinder their ability to create the kind of technology that people expect from Apple, I don't think it would at all. If anything, I think this would open up 
the kind of technology that Apple creates, which is really great, honestly, a lot of the time, I think it would open up that technology to a wider array of users. Um, so cool, I guess. I, I really just, I'm afraid I just don't see a downside. And the thing is that the arguments that you'll get from, I don't know what to call them, and I realize this is extremely disrespectful, um, but I just, I, I'm so sorry, I can't think of another word, but just like the zombies, um, you know, the kind of argument that you'll get from these zealots uh, that will defend this multi-trillion, multi-trillion dollar corporation to the death. Like, it's just, it's this bizarre dynamic that I don't understand, like having this kind of parasocial relationship with a logo. Um, you know, the kind of arguments you'll get from them is, you know, I like the closed ecosystem. I like the walled garden. I like, I like everything that's great about having a MacBook and an iPhone and AirPods and a Vision Pro and all the synergies that exist between all these products. You can have that like, and still not be locked down. Cool. Yeah. Then keep buying them all. I'm not asking for anything to change for you. <laughs> I'm just asking for a way to update the firmware on the bloody product I bought without buying another product to, and to not, to not recognize the level of disrespect that that is to basically say, yeah, you have to you have to come to our store in order to update the firmware on this product. If you don't didn't buy enough of our products, I, I mean, imagine for a second, imagine for a second if to get a Windows update after you bought a Windows computer, okay, you yeah, had to go to a to Microsoft store in. and have them install it for you. <laughs> imagine uh. it, like. That's the thing you got to do is you got to, in any case, whether we're talking Democrat versus Republican, PlayStation versus Xbox, Apple versus whatever, you've got to take whatever that thing is, and then you've got to pretend that someone you hate did it and decide if it would be okay. And if it wouldn't be okay, then it's not okay. It, it yeah, really is. That's that a good way to see it, actually. Fight. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to frame it. Um, continuing on, many parallels are being drawn to the Microsoft antitrust case, which was like the last really major one of these they did. It's not the last one they did. It's the last super major one they did, um, which involved years of arguments, rulings, appeals of those rulings, and eventually a settlement with Microsoft making a number of concessions. Uh, Riley also notes here that uh, I, as in Riley, uh, have also seen analysts claim both that the lawsuit is well-founded and poorly founded. An eventual messy compromise seems likely. Which, yeah. I mean, well, you're going to have I, incredible I, amounts of money going into this from, from Apple and a bunch of money from the government. The government doesn't want to lose. So lots of money versus government not wanting to lose. It's going to take a while. It's going to be a big compromise. The way that I see this playing out is the government winning enough that it will it will be such a huge distraction and such a large sunk cost for Apple by the time this whole thing plays out that they will, at least if Microsoft is anything to go by, they will for 20 years or so chill the math out on the whole anti-competitive business practices thing. Yeah, I mean, hopefully. some of this stuff has just been, has been so obvious for so long. I mean, it, it, look at the, the Epic Games versus Apple thing. I, I don't think that Epic, you don't have to like Tim Sweeney. You don't have to like Epic Games. I don't want Epic Games store on my computers. And I have, I've, I've gotten into it with Tim Sweeney in the past. I wouldn't say that he's my favorite person ever, but, I th and and I think that you know if we were to <laughs> ignore the the personal motivations for this from Tim Sweeney, where he obviously wants to make more money and grow his company, that would be ridiculous. You, we shouldn't ignore that either. But to disagree with his fundamental points that Apple and these other marketplace holders are engaging in anti-competitive behavior in order to lock in their enormous 30% take of every purchase that takes place on their platforms. Uh, to disagree with that, I feel like a demonstration that you don't really understand the behaviors that these companies are engaging in, um, and that you don't understand what anti-competitive means. Like, yes, it is fine to build a product 
that has benefits if you use it with first partner. I mean, let's take our screwdriver, for example. It works best with our first party shorty bits, but there's a huge defining the product so that it works, it fits 12 bits if you buy first party ones, and so that it had uh, you know, an RFID chip in the bits and the ratchet stopped functioning if you didn't buy our first party bits. There's a huge, huge difference between designing products that work well together and designing products that punish users for not buying enough and for not playing by our rigid rules. Yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, you often hear the thirty percent thing, and it gets compared to to Steam, which is which is intriguing um, because there's there's some stuff there that makes sense, and there's some stuff there that doesn't. One is like if it's a if it's an in game thing, it doesn't necessarily have to go through Steam. A lot of companies will do that because for DLC and stuff, it's easier. But there are some in game purchases that yep. don't have to go through Steam. Also, there's a lot of things that Steam could do to be significantly more anti competitive that they don't do. Um, there, there's interesting stats. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. There's interesting stats that make it look like oh, Steam is a little uh, uh, like in 2018 a group of valve staff tried to figure out how they how ef- just how efficient they were being and found that they were making more money per head than apple facebook etc nearly every tech giant out there they found out that they were making in 2018 right seven hundred and eighty thousand four hundred dollars per employee at valve of any level <laughs> and you compare that to apple and who Valve's makes roughly oh absolutely no you compare that to apple who historically has incredible amounts of money in the bank and just rakes in cash. You compare that to Apple, Apple makes 476,160 per employee, which is like closer to half than anything else. So Valve is doing well at that 30%, but they allow you to sell your game on your own platform if you want. They sell they allow you to sell your game on other platforms. They're not determining, oh, you have to sell your game at at least the same price as it is on here. Remember Humble Bundle when they were popping off back yep. in the day? They were giving games out basically for free that you were activating on Steam and using Steam service to download and Valve was just chill with that. They, they are not engaging in a lot of these other anti-competitive things. The 30% is a lot. We can talk about that, but that's honestly a different conversation when there's a bunch of different libraries on Steam. Steam even allows you to use games that you have installed from Steam uh, in a different launcher. There's multiple other multi-launcher things. I think even NVIDIA cards these days, you can launch games from their software as if anyone would want to do that. Um, it, it's it's interesting. I, I have some some issues with the 30%, um, but there's a couple really they're not good as comments anti-competitive. From people here. Uh, Hockey R says, I don't hear Linus complaining about Microsoft only letting you play Xbox games on the Xbox. Then you weren't listening uh, because that was a major, major point for me for a long time was Microsoft's lip service that they were paying to gaming on Windows. You know, when they launched Vista, they had this My Games menu. Um, and they, they kept talking about how much they cared about Windows gaming and the Windows gaming ecosystem. Man, in the Xbox 360 and even to an extent, the Xbox One days, I never shut up about how little it made that we would get these releases, these crappy ports way down the line on PC and that and that Microsoft's Windows users were treated like second-class citizens oh, yeah. when functionally the Xbox was just a computer. Guys, I, I, I never shut my mouth about that. The reason you don't hear me complaining about it now is that it's not a problem right now. Games Pass works on Windows and Xbox like nothing. Um, many, many games that you buy for the Xbox, um, I don't think it's all of them yet. I haven't looked into it recently, but I know that there was a big shift that took place about three years ago where many games would actually have a dual license. So you could play them on Windows or play them on Xbox. They added keyboard and mouse support to the Xbox. So you can just play your games with a keyboard and mouse, which was a huge problem for me um, as as a PC gamer. I would look at an Xbox version of a game and be like, oh, great, I get this in two years where I can use a proper set of peripherals with this shooter game. Um, So a lot of the problems that I've had over the years have been addressed. That's why you don't really... That's why you don't really see me complaining about it anymore because, believe it or not, I am not just a hater. I don't complain about things for the sake of complaining about them. I complain about them when they're bad and when they're wrong. 
Um, then this is one from uh, Jens Woost over in Twitch chat. As an app developer and publisher, I find the 30% tax, both Apple and Google, by the way, no one questions that. Epic sued both of them. On one hand, I find it high, uh, but I also get a lot of services for that. I get a complete store system, including invoicing, payments, management, etc. I also get a review process, which, yes, can be frustrating, but also ensures a quality threshold for the apps being published. Nobody has a problem with that. And I want to make this just crystal, crystal clear. Nobody, not me, not the DOJ, not Tim Sweeney, nobody has a problem with that. The problem is not the 30% fee. The problem is not the complete solution with invoicing and, and all of these tools and review and ensuring user safety. None of those are problems. The problem is the lock. The problem is the lock in. The problem is that if I don't want your invoicing system, if I don't want your payment processing, I am forced out. That's the problem. The problem is that that review process so often, I mean, Luke, what is the percentage of times that we had our iOS app blocked over a user safety or user security issue? Uh, quite a few. It's not happening as much anymore, just to be super clear for people watching. This was a major yeah. thing, like probably a year and a half to two years ago. It was happening all the time, like every other time. No, no, and no. when it would happen, it might happen multiple Sorry, times. Luke. For user safety or security? Oh, uh, I think never. Okay. How many times were we blocked for something that was not that? Very often. Yeah. Well, my favorite one, this Remember is a little bit off topic. We were blocked? Yeah. You might Netflix even be going one, there. Right? I'll let Luke tell the story because I'm laggy. Oh, the Netflix one. No, I was going to talk about, there was one time we got blocked because they said they, they couldn't log in. Uh, and then they sent us a screenshot of someone else's login portal while trying to input our information. Uh, there was another time where they we got blocked because they said they couldn't log in. And then I, I looked at, it was our login portal. And I looked at their login uh, and they they just typed it wrong. And I sent back, I was like, why are you typing yeah. anything? <laughs> like, what? why are you copy and pasting this? This is crazy. Um I don't know what the, the Netflix one what was it. Uh, Netflix was doing something. Yeah, where we we set up our yeah we it was the um, the first thing you see when you launch the app. It just yeah. it directed people to create an account on our site or something like that. Yeah, and it, basically um, our team assumed that what we were doing was fine because Netflix for some reason had a special arrangement with Apple where they were allowed to direct people to their own portal. Um, for, uh, for subscriptions, and they did not. They outright did not allow people to subscribe through the app because Netflix's entire business yeah. model would be unsustainable if they gave Apple 30% of their gross. And so they, they had their they had their sign up set up in such a way that you were just <coughs> redirected. I don't know to that Netflix's it still is, website. to be clear. And so we set up. Sorry? I was just speaking to the audience. I was saying, I don't know that it still is or not. This was, oh. this was a while ago. Yeah, <laughs> this was a while back. So we set up thinking, okay, well, that's obviously okay because someone else is doing it. We set up our app to work exactly the same way because, believe it or not, our business model, being a video streaming platform for Floatplane, is equally not sustainable if we're giving 30% of our gross to Apple. We're, we're not selling in-game cosmetics. Uh, we, are, we are not um, you know, selling just you know, button mashing games or whatever else. Like We, we have very significant costs associated with serving this video and 30% of gross is, is not sustainable for us um, to the point where we will invest cycles into creating our own payment processing and our own subscription plan management and all of that stuff in order to make it sustainable. And so we set it up in the same way that Netflix was doing it and our app got rejected. And when we responded saying this is exactly the same as Netflix, that was a long battle. Yeah, um, they, and uh, right out the I gate, they, they were like, yeah, I, you, you, I can't even remember. They did. They, they said that you can't compare uh, yourself to any other app on the platform. It's not a valid argument. Um, and I was like, this is one of the biggest apps on the platform. How is this possibly not a valid argument? You think people aren't going to build things based off what they see on your thing? And they were just like, you can't compare to any other app. This is what we're telling you. You have to listen to what we say. And it's like, 
okay. Because uh, that was also really frustrating because I would complain back when we were having a lot of problems. I would complain about us getting blocked for X or Y or B reason. And people would message me and tweet at me and all this kind of stuff. Oh, well, my app got through with whatever. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't mean anything in my experience. There's no like... It's all completely individual. I'm having this problem. I'm now dealing with this person on Apple's side and it just is what it is. There's, I can't make any arguments based on precedent. Uh, it's just super frustrating. Um, yeah. Which is how arguments work, by the way. Yeah. Precedent <sighs> matters a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. You, like, it, and, and again, you've got you've to come back to, would you be okay with it if someone that you hate did it? So if Microsoft were to say, oh, yeah, you know, um, Valve, oh, oh, this, okay, here, here's, this, here's a stupid thing. You know, oh, yeah, you know, Valve is allowed to have uh, Steam integrated enough into Windows networking so that when you switch to a wired connection, it'll automatically go faster and use that wired connection. But, um, you know, Uplay can't have, can't have that. So it'll just stay on Wi-Fi unless you manually disconnect your Wi-Fi and relaunch the app. And um, yeah, too bad. It's different rules for different applications. You'd be furious. You'd you'd be sitting there going, "Well, this is this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous that they're gatekeeping this." And that's exactly the argument here. You just you, you can't gatekeep functionality like that. Um, and for anyone who's going to sort of argue back at me, yes, you can. Apple did it. The answer is no, you can't. And the DOJ finally woke up from its 25-year slumber yeah. and figured it out. Um, at the time, back back in 1998, you know, I was 12, so I didn't really understand. I I used I used Internet Explorer. And I thought Internet Explorer was fine because I didn't know any better. I had all I had ever touched was uh, Netscape Navigator, which, from my perception, was a piece of garbage. Did I perceive it as a piece of garbage though, because of Microsoft's anti-competitive practices that effectively forced, like, removed all of their all of their funding? Maybe, but as a, as a consumer, I didn't understand the impact that Microsoft's behavior was having on competing products and on their own product. All I saw was the convenience, just so convenient. Windows comes with Internet Explorer. It's so natural. Of course they're integrated because I was just, a, I was a kid. I didn't get it. Now I am three times the age, which has some downsides. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but definitely has some benefits. I, I have, I have the wisdom to look at the what vision. Microsoft did back then, to look at what Apple is doing now and see the knock-on effects of this. See the way that this kind of platform gatekeeping harms me, even if I don't understand it. And if you are, if you're a user who loves the Apple ecosystem. Let me let me try to attract you with honey instead of vinegar this time. Forcing Apple to compete harder is going to be good for you. You want a hungry Apple. You want a competitive Apple with bite. You don't want an Apple that is just going to sit and get fat and lazy and put billions of dollars into vanity projects that they ultimately cancel. You want an Apple that is trying to make the iPhone better. An Apple that recognizes like, oh, you know, there's a serious, there's a serious, you know, quality problem with, um, you know, I'm just going to go after a lower hanging fruit. Uh, you know, oh, there's a, there's a small percentage of users who are still mad that you still can't move around your app icons on the home screen to your heart's content, that you have to create you know, garbage folders wherever you, and, and make them invisible wherever you want to have an empty spot. Um, we should deal with that. Let's get hungry. Let's fix problems. Um, the fact that they took, what was it, three or four years to address those butterfly keyboards in their MacBooks? You don't want that Apple. You want the Apple that is that is scared of losing market share. You want that and drive. You should know that. 
Yeah. Yeah. You want the Apple that is going to lower the price of iCloud because they don't just get to stuff it down your throat because they're forced to allow other cloud providers. Like, man, how awesome would it be if someone like a Backblaze had the same level of API access and could have the same level of integration with iOS? All of a sudden, you wouldn't have to pay for freaking iCloud. Backblaze is a perfectly good service. And if Apple was forced to allow it onto their platform, you would benefit because they would have to compete with iCloud instead of just, I mean, has the pricing of iCloud, when's the last time the pricing of iCloud changed? Never mind the pricing. When's the minimum amount that they've provided? When's the last time that changed? Because it's like nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I know um, there, there's two interesting arguments to go along with this as well. Um, I got both these from Theo, but um, one of them is that uh, this is this is a shout out to us because it's bad for us. But I, th- I think he was talking about places like Twitch and stuff mostly at the time. Um, but platforms that have a split with the creators on the platform. So Flowplane would be one of these. Twitch would be one of these. YouTube maybe. I don't think YouTube is largely operating this way, but it's going to impact them to a certain degree. Even Twitch, it's only part of their audience that this is going to impact, but it is to a certain degree. Um, Any platform where you're splitting the income already, this is an additional split, and that's going to hurt those platforms disproportionately compared to other ones. Because uh, like Floatplane, for instance, that's a much bigger chunk that comes out of the pie before we have to try to split it with our creators that are on the platform. So it, it splits and then it splits again, which is really, really rough for, for us. And then you have platforms that have probably, uh, I, don't, I don't know, the, the other argument floating around is that there's, there's platforms that are like carrying the monetization of the app store. And there's platforms that are mostly just benefiting from it. Um, Cause there's platforms that are really big and very important. Think, uh, I think the example that Theo used was like banking apps. Banking apps are gonna pay their Apple developer fee and then nothing, despite being a like yeah. huge requirement in the modern era for people to do banking with your bank at all, is to have a banking app. So you would this would be something that they would pay a ton for, but they're paying nothing. So they're effectively getting subsidized by the 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 Twitches, the float planes, the the mo- mobile apps with microtransactions in them. All all the things that are actually flowing a lot of money through this thirty percent cut is effectively subsidizing these other in a lot of cases, enormous companies that just have to pay their developer fee or nothing if they're on the uh, Google Play Store. But it's both of those situations are like, this doesn't feel like right. This doesn't feel good. I don't know. Oh, and there's no incentive for Apple to change it. No, no, I'm here. And there's no incentive for Apple to change any of that as long as they're making money. Yeah. Hand over fist, I might add. Yeah. And if they're if they're not if they are not um, required to compete with anybody, if they're able to just sit and maintain the status quo as long as it's comfortable, <clears throat> and that's exactly what these kinds of antitrust cases are designed to combat, is complacency and comfort to force them to compete hard. And everyone, absolutely everyone, unless you own a whole bunch of Apple stock, should be rooting for that. And you know what? Even if you own a whole bunch of Apple stock, you should still be rooting for it. Did did Microsoft get crippled by the 1998 antitrust? Was decoupling Windows and Internet Explorer actually? I'm I'm talking now, long term, because long term they're doing they're doing what? great right now. They're Don't, crushing right now, to be honest. I'm I'm not an accountant. Okay, this is not financial advice, but pretty much. Anyone smart that you talk to who treats stocks like anything other than gambling is going to tell you, you are buying these for the long term. You're buying it because it's a company that you believe in, because it's a vision you believe in. It's something that you understand. That's how you're actually supposed to buy stocks because you're supposed to be, instead of trying to time the market, you're supposed to be going for time in market, knowing that you know historically it has grown at X rate and whatever the case may be. Um, so with that in mind, if you bought Microsoft long, are you are you a sad camper today you're because of that it. lawsuit? 
Especially if you actually you're bought it right, it right when that lawsuit it. came in, you're you're probably doing super well. <laughs> because because they had to they had to fight. They had to actually try. And you know what? Have they learned anything in the long term? I think no. Their shenanigans with Edge these days, honestly, are probably worse than what they were doing with Internet Explorer back in the 90s. However, with that said, what I hope is that the DOJ wins an enormous settlement here and we see a bit of a return to good behavior because, man, has Edge ever gotten annoying. I would love to see them go after Microsoft again. Honestly, I would just love to see the DOJ get 10x the staff and see them go after a whole bunch of the just clown show behavior that we've seen around right to repair, around anti-competitive practices, around walled garden ecosystems. I'm just so tired of it. And I'm tired of us accepting it. It's really frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, HP printers, let's go. Man, like, I'm I'm kind of wondering. I've been I've been this bit on my radar for a little bit. I don't think they're in a spot right now for it to be a thing. But some of the actions that Microsoft has been taking towards AI stuff has me going like, "Are you guys releasing the beast again? Like, uh, what's going on here? Are you guys trying to completely control the entire AI space or no? Because so, sometimes it's like it, it get a little close, but they haven't they haven't actually done it yet. But uh, I wonder if this is going to feel like a, a shot across the bow. I don't know. We'll see. I hope so. I hope they're trying to make an example of them. The fact that it's <laughs> so so broad, to me... Yeah, they're going after everything. I can see where people are coming from, going like, oh, this is it's messy. But the fact that it's so broad, in my mind, is more of an indication that they are going for damage here. So that I think they know they're not going to win everything. Yeah. But yeah, if they just are let, some hurt. If they're coming in going, okay... Full broadside, this is going to hurt. And even if it doesn't hurt that much in terms of the final settlement, this is going to be such a distraction. This is going to be so costly, it's in just in terms of the opportunity cost, in terms of the, the time lawyers. wasted. I think the message to Apple is play nice, or this is going to be an ongoing problem. You are going to be defending yourself on all fronts. And I just, I hope... I hope they stick to it. Yeah. Yeah, With for sure. With that said, it's an election year, so who knows, right? Yeah, that's true. I um, Priorities change so fast in American politics these days. Well, yeah, you can't even just specify America there, but yeah, I agreed. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's interesting because most people that I know, because yeah, like you were you were twelve or whatever. I was like nine. I don't know um, when the Microsoft thing happened. Yeah. Most people talking to them about the about what happened. Um, if you, you've talked to them about like how that felt back then and what they think about the ramifications of it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Most sentiment that I have seen is that they wish that this type of thing happened more often. What happened to more companies? They'll point at some company now that's doing something and be like, "Why aren't they going after them?" So. Yeah, I think we should yes. be happy that the people that, if you're American, I guess, are you're you're paying them to do their job. You should be happy, I guess, that they're doing their job. Um, and hopefully they they keep doing yeah. it because anti-competitiveness is bad. We can all wish they should do more of their job. A hundred percent, I'm with you. They should do more of their job. Yeah, but you know, let's take what we can get. Um, yeah, this is good. This is <laughs> and good. Like, yeah, I'm not American, and a lot of you are probably not American. But Apple, being an American company, is most vulnerable on American soil. And Apple's, hmm, is it their largest market or is it China now? But at least one of their biggest markets, it's either one or two, I can't remember. But this being Apple's biggest or second biggest market, um, anything that Apple has to do for their American customers is very likely to trickle down to everyone else. So it's a very, very good thing for everyone else. Um, yeah. Jeed Ora over on Twitch says the lawsuit reads like it was written by someone that was really tech illiterate. They blame Apple for the death of Windows Phone and others instead of those companies making bad moves. And that's a really good point. Uh, I've I haven't read it. Probably it's like ninety five pages or however many pages it is. I I haven't read it, but I've skimmed a little bit of it and I've looked at some highlights of it that people have been talking about on Reddit that really do <clears throat> emphasize what you're talking about. You're not wrong. 
There yeah. are definitely some areas where it could have been improved by bringing in someone who really understands tech and the history behind some of these things. But again, I, I get that government competence is not going to be as high as private sector competence. And I understand that the DOJ is going to lose a lot of this. Um, all I can hope for is that they win enough that we see a sizable enough settlement that Apple is sufficiently wrist slapped to change their behavior in at least a, a temp for at least some temporary amount of time and that it causes every the rest of the industry to kind of wake up and go whoa hold on a second like uh, okay a great example of this was when the fcc went after that uh that xbox promotion where twitch streamers weren't disclosing that they were paid to play games on xbox this was back uh, around the launch of the xbox one it never got followed up as far as i can tell i don't think we saw let alone a high profile case i don't think we saw a single additional case going after this kind of undisclosed uh, product sponsorship um, and paid sponsorship. But what I will say is it brought about a significant shift. It didn't clean the industry up completely. There's still companies out there and there's still many, many, many influencers out there that are doing dirty deals, undisclosed deals. But compared to what it was before then, when it was complete, yeehaw, like just wild west. Um, I would say that it is markedly improved. Even now, even eight years later, or whatever we're up to, eight or nine years later. So I, I, I am uncharacteristically optimistic. Is it naive? Maybe. But we saw a big change in Microsoft's behavior for a long time in 1998. We saw a big change in advertiser and influence behavior, at least temporarily um, back when the FCC hit Microsoft for that uh, Xbox promotion. And I would, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we, uh, Avon Fox in Floatplane says, it's now fashionable to say you disclose. Yeah, it is. And some people don't. Some people some fashionably of that, say they disclose and they disclose sometimes. But. Some of that is an extremely major shift in viewer sentiment about creators monetizing their stuff extremely major when we first started any form of monetization no matter what you would get very significant hate and like a lot of it from a lot of people where people are really mad these days if you don't monetize your stuff people are like what are you doing you need to make money so you can do this as a career you need to monetize your stuff play those yeah, ads on Twitch. Bag, yeah that's that's like super common these days it is completely flipped so back in the day disclosing that you had this this is why doing stuff like that is bad disclosing that you had some type of agreement back in the day would have got you significant hate and potentially lost you viewers and these days disclosing that you have it people are going to cheer for you and hope that you do better it has changed so much Sometimes. it's actually wild yeah so unless they don't like the company that you have the agreement with but like in general it's seen positively